Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson on differentiation using the function of a function rule, often called the chain rule. Um, last lesson we looked at a, a relatively difficult question. It looked at something that wasn't exactly this, but it looked similar to this. Um, let's say 2x plus 1 cubed. Okay, and when we said that we couldn't um, just derive it on its own, we, what we had to do, we had to expand the brackets out. And the hard thing was, if you didn't know the way to, to uh, expand a perfect cube, what we had to do is sort of expand them one at a time. So if I do um, square 2x plus 1, I get 4x plus 4x squared plus 4x plus uh, 1. Okay, and then I'd have to expand it again, and you can see how long it's getting. 2x times 4x makes 8x cubed, 2x... Uh, times 4x makes 8x uh, squared and then plus 2x on the end and then we get 1 times 4x squared is 4x squared then 1 times 4x is just 4x 1 times 1 is 1 okay um, and then I can simplify a few things we get 8x cubed plus 12x squared um, plus 6x plus 1 then what I would have to do is then I actually have to derive it and say 3 times 8 is 24x squared plus 2 times 12 makes uh, 24 just x and then plus 6 because obviously that drops off and that drops off itself. So that would be my answer. Now it's a little bit long winded because I had to expand the brackets. What if that was the power of 4 or to the power of 5 or you know, God forbid, to the power of 10. It makes it much, much more challenging because you'd have to expand it all out first and then derive it. So obviously there has to be a quicker way. And in fact, there is. There's this what we call the chain rule or the function of the function rule. Now, it's hard to explain, I guess, when you're looking at it, if, I'm, if I want to write an actual rule out. So I'm just going to show you it, how I would do this rule myself. And you can actually see the steps aren't too challenging once you get the hang of it. Okay, so we're going to take this as if this is its term, a term on its own. So for example, if I had x cubed, how would you um, differentiate x cubed? Hopefully you'd say 2x squared. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to, so not 2x squared, hopefully you didn't say that, 3x squared. Okay, so I'm going to bring the 3 down from the brackets and say 3, that's my term. And I'm going to take one away from there. That is the beginning part of the function of a function rule, the chain rule. So we sort of derive this as a term on its own. But you think, well, obviously it can't be the, exactly that because this is not just x or whatever. There, there's stuff inside it. And that's exactly right. Once we derive the first part and say 3 outside of 2x plus 1 squared, because remember we took 1 away from 3, we then need to multiply it by the derivative of whatever's inside the brackets. So let's now say we've got 2x plus 1 on its own. How would you derive 2x plus 1? Well, hopefully you would just say, well, actually, the derivative of 2x is just 1 times 2 is 2, and the x disappears, and the derivative of plus 1 is nothing. That's what I'm left with. So actually, I'm left with 3 times 2, which is 6, outside of 2x plus 1 squared. Now, for the most part, if you get a question like this, then I'm very happy for you to leave your answer in that form. Just at the moment, though, you might say, hold on, these two things are different. They're not the same. Well, they're not the same because I haven't expanded the brackets. If I want to expand the brackets, I'm going to have 6 outside of um, 4x squared plus 1 times 2 is 2x, 4x plus 1, which then gives me 24x squared plus uh, 6 fours are 24x plus 6, which is exactly the same, as you can see. All right, so it's a different way to drive, and it's a lot quicker, okay? But it's a lot quicker and more, particularly because you're often allowed to leave your answers in that form there. Okay, so let's have a look at another question. We're going to look at quite a few questions this morning with this work. So eg2. So we're going to look at the function fx is equal to... Let's say we're going to have 3x minus 1 to the power of 4. 
So obviously if I had to do this the long way, that's the power of four. I'm gonna have to write that up four times, expand them all. It's just, it's just a pain in the rear end. So my quick rule, my chain rule, or my function or function rule says, let's just act as if this is x to the power of four, which if we derive that would be four x cubed. So let's put the four down and make the four there. That's my term. And I gotta take one away from it. Now the trick is, and this is where a lot of people go wrong, they often forget now to multiply it by the derivative of what's inside the brackets. So the derivative of three x negative one would just be, well, the derivative of three x is just three because that'd make it to the power of zero, which is one and the derivative of negative one is nothing, so it's just three. So now my answer is f dash x is equal to 12 brackets three x minus one cubed. And I don't have to expand it out. Okay, I can just leave it that way. Because, you know, I might then get a question. Remember that again, we're finding the gradient. This is the, the rule to find the gradient. They might then say, find the gradient of my tangent um, at the point um, let's say 1, 3. So what I can now then say is f dash x is equal to 12 brackets 3 times 1, negative 1 cubed, and then for my answer there. So 12 outside, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 take away 1 is 2, um, so 2 cubed is 8, 8 times 12 is 96. So my the gradient at the point 1, 3 would be 96. So again, you can see that it's a much quicker way by doing this uh, chain rule or function of a function rule. And then once we've found our actual formula or our um, equation of our gradient, if you, if you have, um, then if you're given a point, you can simply substitute into that particular rule. Um, I will say they do get a little bit trickier. Okay, they do get a little bit nastier particularly when you, you need to, um, I guess, group like terms and, and factorize fully. Okay, so we've looked at two relatively easier type of questions. So let's start looking at more challenging ones. Let's look at um, y is equal to, let's say, 5x plus 4 to the power of 1, three, 1 over 3. Okay. So again, my function of a function rule, my chain rule, we bring the one third down there. We have our five x plus four. Now what's one third take away one? Well, I hope you said it's negative two thirds. So that's my first part. I now need to multiply it by the derivative of the inside part of my brackets. So the derivative of five x is just five, and then the four disappears. So I'm left with five times one third, which is simply five thirds, outside of five x plus four, to negative two thirds. Now the good part of it is, I was given the question in the form of an indice, so I can leave it in the form of an indice as well. Okay. Um, you could, if you wish, and we might show that, if I was asked to give it um, without an index, or the positive indice or whatever okay this whole thing is going to go underneath because it's that negative okay so I'd have 5 on top all over 3 now this whole thing is going to go under a, a root sign now we've got 2 thirds so the bottom part tells me what the roots going to be or what the radical sign is going to be it's going to be the cubed root and it's going to be 5x plus 4 all squared. That's the two part there. So we could write it that way as well. And particularly if they give us, if they gave this in the form of y is equal to the cube root of 5x plus 4, we would then write it that way. We would derive it and then write it back in this form. Just make sure you write your answer in the form they gave it to you. Okay, so you can see that the questions definitely get more challenging. Okay, definitely get more challenging. Um, let's have a look at one other solar question. Okay, eg4. Y is equal to 1 over 2 root 
3x minus 1. All right, that's a bit of a handful. Now, at the moment, we only know how to uh, to use either the quick rule or the function or function rule. So remember, 1 over 2 is the same as saying a half. Then we've got root 3x minus 1 on the bottom. So what I'm going to put, I'm going to put this as an indice. 3x negative 1. Now, to put it on the bottom, I need to have a minus. That puts it under the, the, the fraction sign. And it's a half because it's the square root of 3x minus 1. Okay, so now I've got, in that format, I can now derive it. y dash is equal to, or you can put dy dx if you wish as well. Okay, so negative a half times it by a half. So that makes it negative 1 over 4. 3x minus 1, because that doesn't change. Now what's minus a half minus 1? Well, that is negative 1 and a half, or negative 3 over 2. Now that's the first section. We now need to multiply it by the derivative of the brackets. So that, that would be the derivative of 3x is just 3. Okay, so let's start to clean it up a little bit now. We get negative, now 3 times 1 quarter is 3 quarters. Brackets 3x minus 1, negative 3 over 2. Okay, now the issue is they gave us the question in terms of a fraction, so we need to go back that way. So y dash is equal to. Okay, so because we've got negative 3 over 2, we know that 3x minus 1 will be going on the bottom. Okay, so it means we've got negative 1 on top. We can put the 4 on the bottom because it's negative a quarter. And I can put here... Now, we've got the negative done, but now we've got 3 over 2. The over 2 bit means the square root of, so I'll just put the square root sign, and the top bit means the power sign, the 3. So it's 3x minus 1 cubed. Now, again, it's a bit of a mouthful. It's a hard, hard question, okay? But hopefully you're starting to understand the concepts of the chain rule, the product of a product rule, which means you take the indice, put it down in front like we've been doing previously and then take one away from it then but then make sure we multiply it by the derivative of the inside parts of the brackets and then we need to clean it up and then write the answer in the way that we were given the question okay four tough questions have a crack at some at some questions in your book um, if you need any help let me know um, if this wasn't clear to you let me know as well and uh, and I'll try to put some extra stuff up on here for you awesome have a great day